everyone, how's your summer going? We are having an amazing summer with enough rain that we don't have to water our gardens every single day. But at the same time, when it rains here, it pours. So if you're using Niger seed or um, halt sunflower seeds or any varieties of a uh, mess free uh, bird seed, and if you're finding that they're getting wet and spoiling and gumming up your feeders, uh, try using feeder fresh you know normally we recommend using black oil sunflower seeds in your tube feeders this is what Cornell recommends but in the summer you know we all have our nice lawns and we don't want the the shells to destroy all our grass so we switch to hulled sunflowers and then uh, goldfinches absolutely love niger seed here but it's a bit finicky in the summer so that's what I do I uh, fill up my niger feeder with niger seed and then I just uh, top it off with about an inch uh, layer of a feeder fresh and I find that it just keeps the seeds so much fresher both in the winter and in the summer like this and then with my hulled sunflowers, you know, Dennis recommends uh, sort of putting it at the bottom or layering it, but I like to mix it with my seed because this is basically grit. And if birds need it, they'll eat it. If they don't need it, they'll just leave it. So at the end, when this is empty, there's nothing left. So I just kind of go like this and then mix it all up. Like that. And then I fill my feeder. Try it out, Feeder Fresh will absorb moisture and will keep your hulled seeds and your Niger seed fresh longer. Stefan Weissman has a rose-breasted grosbeak that's been visiting his bird feeders. Half the bird is female and the other half is male. So Stefan is wondering how common this is and whether the bird will behave as a male or female. Hi Stefan, what an amazing video you've taken. It not only shows what we know to be a genetomorphic rose-breasted grosbeak, but also features a male in normal plumage for comparison. What exactly is genandromorphy, you might ask? Well, while this somewhat rare and bizarre condition has been documented in a variety of insects, snakes and crustaceans, among birds it's found mostly in northern cardinals and rose-breasted grosbeaks. In the latter cases, the birds look like someone drew a line from the middle of their tails to the tip of their beaks and painted a female plumage on one side and a male's colors on the other. In other words, they're half male and half female. The term genandromorph is derived from the Greek language, specifically gin meaning female, andro referring to male, and morphe meaning form. Without getting too technical, it's often an aberration seen in the early mitotic cell division whereupon one of the cells does not split its sex chromosomes in typical fashion. One cell ends up with sex chromosomes that cause male development and the other with those leading to female development. It's not just cosmetic either. Besides these birds having an ovary on one side and a testes on the other, sometimes hormonal secretions help determine the sex of their brains. It's possible, for example, to get that part of the brain responsible for song divided into male and female. But all this begs the question, how do these weird looking birds make out in the wild? Well, based on a very small sample size, the birds appear to live a normal life and they're not necessarily shunned by others of their own species, as you can readily see in Stefan's video. However, mating is a whole different issue. Gernandromorphic songbirds seldom, if ever, sing or call, let alone acquire a mate. In other words, by trying to appeal to both sexes, they end up appealing to neither. The next time someone teases you about being a bird watcher, tell them that you're simply working on your brain health, or more specifically, trying to stave off memory loss. Everyone knows that our memory functions tend to decrease with age, and can even lead to dementia or worse Alzheimer's. But a new study out of Baycrest Rotman Research Institute by lead author Dr. Eric Wing, yes it's his real name, says the man with the last name Bird, examined memory in expert bird watchers. He and his team found that having expert knowledge in a subject helps us to memorize new information. The premise for the research goes like this. 
Forgetting things often happens when similar memories interfere with each other, but having expert knowledge in something provides us with a mental organizational structure. Basically, it helps us to keep new items that we want to learn distinct from each other. The Baycrest study recruited local bird experts from Toronto bird watching clubs, as well as experts in gardening, fishing and hiking as comparative groups. Both groups of participants were shown sets of bird images and asked to arrange them visually on the screen according to perceived similarity. The birding experts used more subtle features of the birds, while the control groups resorted to more superficial features like colour. To test the participants' memories, they were all shown a series of bird photographs and then later a second series containing both old and new birds. Next they asked them to identify any birds seen in the first series. The birding experts who had grouped birds based on specific features performed better than those who just used colour. Even among the birding experts, those who used mostly colour demonstrated worse memory ability. The bottom line? The study suggests that the better you are at identifying birds, the longer you may be able to retain your ability to remember things. Now where the heck are my car keys? Before I tell you all about Ospreys, I wanted to say thank you to Stephen Laurie Bigler from LSB Photography. They contributed all the Osprey pictures on this segment. Did you know that Ospreys are not merely North and South American birds? They live pretty much all over the world. Northern populations are migratory, so here in Canada we only see them in the summer. I guess fishing is not that easy here in the winter. They arrive in their breeding grounds in March, April, and some of them have already started their fall migration. In some areas in North America in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, their population dropped drastically because of DDT and other pesticides. Ospreys contributed to the ban of many harmful pesticides, which in return helped them bounce back. So hooray for Ospreys. Of all the hawks, I find that Ospreys are the easiest to identify because their white head and that dark stripe on their face really stand out. From far away, you might not be able to tell females or males apart, but when you get a closer look, remember this, ladies like to wear necklaces. So females have this kind of a speckled brown necklace on their chest and males are completely white. 99% of Osprey's diet is live fish like mackerel, herring, salmon, trout and sardines and only when food is really scarce would they go for something on the ground or will they help themselves to dead fish and they absolutely love hunting in shallow clear water. Ospreys are solitary birds except during their breeding season. Pairs tend to be monogamous and they do return to their old nesting sites. Both males and females build open nests, very large nests on top, anything like a platform. Uh, you've probably seen them on telephone poles or those man-made structures. They're not very territorial when it comes to food, but they do defend their nests because bald eagles and raccoons tend to prey on them. Females lay normally three eggs per clutch. Both males and females incubate. Daddies bring food, it's fish of course, to feed the young. The chicks fledge when they're about 49 to 55 days old, but they might stick close to the nest for another month or two before they take off on their own. All right, let's check out the top five and the winners of Get Your Ducks in a Row Photo Contest. Here's the third place, the second place, and the grand prize winner. Congratulations, everybody. Remember, there are two photo contests in August. The second one, I'm just looking, not staring. Good luck, everyone. Well, that's it, that's all for now. Next episode is P for Purple Finch. So if you have any pictures, videos, or stories about these birds, send them over, we'll happily share them with everyone. Take care everyone, I'll catch you in two weeks.